We are here today at the Royal Concert Hall in Glasgow for the first MCR National Conference. The main event today is celebrating the wonderful young people in our city and showcasing their talents and also to recruit many more mentors for the other young people that still require them across the city. I was most excited just to see everybody turn up because every one of them is going to leave here a mentor, I can guarantee that. It's about equipping the young people with life skills, um, but also confidence. And regardless of your circumstances, every young person in the city should be afforded the same opportunities. Well, the thing I'm looking forward to, no question, is just the young people running it. They have got so many things planned. We know we've got a plan in theory that's on paper, but um, I know already there's, we're going to go off piste, off script, and they are just going to share what matters to them. We would like to respectfully disrupt the way that our society is working nowadays. We want the young people to have more of a role in deciding the future, since it is our future, and I'll be one of the many hopes of this experience. We've given over the Royal Concert Hall to 50 of our young people. They organise the event, they're going to run it, and they're going to rock it. There's no question of that. Good afternoon everyone and welcome to NCR Pathways National Conference, Respectful Disruption, Inspired Decisions. I'm Sarah and I'm an S5 in Lord Secondary. Alongside my fellow presenters, Fabio, Chloe and Dylan, uh, I'll be guiding you through today. I was challenging, had anger issues and I found it hard to trust people. I like the sound of having someone who was just there for me, but no idea what it would be like. Knowing that you come each week because you care is an amazing thing to have in our lives and something that every young person in the city deserves to have. She's a good person to talk to. I would tell her things that I wouldn't normally tell others. She listened to me about the challenges I was facing, which is what I needed. Someone just to listen to me. I don't have many friends, but thanks to the YGT and MCR combined, I now have the most amazing of people surrounding me. The world moves at such a pace, nothing stays the same. What we face is different because we're growing up in a different time and place from you. I'm Tessie, and today I'm going to give you a glimpse into our world. Today, I ask you to take a walk in my shoes. Wait a minute. What's she done to your face? She's so ugly. Tramp. She's stunning. Now you wish you look like him. <laughs> I mean, she's kind of cute. Nah. Selfie! Hold on a minute. Let's see what's really going on. I look too feminine. I look so dark. My nose is so fat. My legs are too big. We are 70 young people, the ages of 14 to 18, about negative things people say and the negative thoughts that they have about themselves. You're not going to get a job dressed like that. You're pathetic. What's the point of you? And it looks like we have a winner. Or should I say loser? <clears throat> anyway, anything you'd like to say to our fabulous audience? Sometimes it's hard to shut out the voices online, the voices on the street, the voices in school, even the voices at home. But most of all, it's hardest to shut out the voices in my head. Look at your faces on the screens. Remember being 15, all the doubts, the fears that you had, all the high emotions? Do you remember? We need you to help us to build that resilience, to keep moving forward, to pick us up when we fall. Not above us, not below us, but just beside us. We need to open up the conversation, so we're moving on to the next part of our programme, the interactive workshop. Please do fully participate. Don't worry if you are slightly out of your comfort zone. 
so are we. But by working together, we can make the changes that are needed. The workshops are going to give you a flavour of what's making a difference in our lives. And it never ceases to amaze me how talented, how capable, how confident young people are who've been involved in the programme. I'm not that nervous. I'm just kind of taking it how it goes. That means getting to pop on stage and having a bit of fun. What would you say has been the key to success of the programme as it has grown over the last 10 years? First and foremost, it's the young people. They're the driving success of this. Secondly is the adult part. And then the adult part, that relates to the wonderful mentors that we have pitching up every single week. The fabulous school staff that we work with and, and have the privilege of working with on a daily basis and the partner organisations that have staff working with is that it's not just a job, they're really, really passionate and driven to do what they want to do. And finally, a massive shout out for the MCR team. Well, I think MCR has brought a great sense of community to our school and there's a real buzz in the atmosphere when the mentors are in. And I think one of the best things for me is looking at our learners when they're waiting for their mentor to come in. They want to speak to their mentor. They want to talk to them. They want to update them. They want to speak to somebody who's not a teacher. They want to be able to relate to them. And they want to attend. And that's been a massive improvement in all Saints Secondary School. I think the MCR instills the ethos that you don't need to settle for second best. You don't need to have your background hold you back in life and actually make the most of every opportunity for the future. Uh, and I have to say, without MCR, we wouldn't be where we are in All Saints School and we'll be eternally grateful for what they've done for us. So thank you. Some of the young people initially really struggled with confidence, motivation, didn't really have a real idea of their potential or career aspirations, but working together as a team in the school, um, we've managed to kind of support them through that um, and get to the stage where they're now feeling much more confident, um, excited about their future, um, with many of them progressing on to college or university and apprenticeships as well. So it's great to see the difference that it's made. The main problem I had in school was making friends or socialising with other people. And because of Donna, because of Stephanie, I've came out of Michelle a lot. The confidence that was oozing out of some of the young people who were basically running the show was amazing. You know, they stand up here in front of, I don't know, almost 400 people today. Some of them have got a vulnerable background, but it certainly doesn't come across. If I look back on myself at the age of 15, I would have said, get yourself a mentor. And unfortunately, at that point in time, they never had uh, what we've got here. And I suppose, that in a way, when I was reflecting on it, that's why I'm so passionate about this. That, that's why I, am, I want this to work. And that's why that I've been pushing and been championing this so that this just doesn't work just within Glasgow, but actually works throughout Scotland. And do you know what? There's no reason why it can't roll out to the rest of the UK. So our programme uh, with MCR Pathways is, is up to first year at university and it's for mentors who will follow the, the MCR Pathways uh, program but then work with us through an online and hybrid learning environment to bring those skills that they develop into the workplace to be better, to be better mentors. So we've gathered together some of the movers and shakers who have the actual power to make changes in our lives. So now we have a couple questions from the floor. I'm a young carer for my two younger brothers. I have experienced discrimination because of my colour and religion. I come from a single parent household. Um, my mum works part time and goes to uni full time. So my question is, how can your organisation ensure we get an equal chance and the support? What else could you do to not just give us a voice but involve us in decisions? How can your organisation support young people who miss out because they don't have any money? What will you do to benefit people in my situation? But it's that dialogue. It can't be done to a carer. The carer has to be part of that process. We actively ensure that there's a diverse range of 
uh, races and sexes within News Scotland and News UK. For many, many years, young carers actually operated under the radar and nobody talked about it. I think now, given events of, of recent times and, uh, and the legislation, people are much more open and much more willing to discuss their circumstances. So it's not about what individuals can do, it's what we can all do by working together to improve your situation. Above all, though, we need to, to make sure that we have that uh, attitudinal change and challenge any outright discrimination. And uh, if that's happening out there, then that's something we need to do. What advice would you give your 15-year-old selves? When you're 15, the ambition is to be 16. And then an 18-year-old is really old. It's pretty old. 21-year-old, oh, my God, your mum and dad, your uncles. Oh, actually, sometimes they have some good advice. And my advice to myself would be, I maybe should have listened a bit more to the adults in my life. You will be able to achieve much more than you think. We are far more capable than we give ourselves credit for, and often than other people give, often than other people give us credit for. So believe in your capability and grow in your confidence. I first got to know you as my mentor, but now I have taken on the challenge to mentor you. It is very challenging, as you do need a lot of support. <laughs> when did you first work out that mentoring mattered so much? Because I came in with all the ideas into our first school, St Andrew's Secondary in the East End. And actually, we tried loads of things. And if I'm being honest, I never knew really what was working until the third year. And it was one of our Next Steps ambassadors. And it literally was a moment, snapshot in time, of us thinking that actually these initiatives and the adult view really worked until I heard her voice just saying, it's a person. It's a relationship. And I'm like, this is, I mean, I get emotional thinking about it now. It's so ridiculous. And I'm like, how can that be? And it was a relationship she had with Donna that just had a relationship of trust. And it was nothing to do with her position. It was just that there was somebody going beyond the call of duty and actually just putting that extra bit of time in. And from that moment, that's when it really triggered to say this stuff, if we could get this at scale and just support the young people in the way that they want to be supported and take the adult brain out of the equation, then we've got a chance. This does not work on its own. It doesn't work. It, it just is irrelevant. It works in a school with education at its core. When it works, it works in partnership. We are just a little cog that fits into a ready, magnificent machine. Okay, so could you tell us about the results that you're about to publish? There's only three ways in which we measure the success of this. How the young people feel, what they believe, your confidence, all that kind of stuff is absolutely one. The other measures are a little bit about attainment. And it is what Jamie talks about. It's attainment, do you want to stay on, do you get some qualification, and most important for us, what is that positive destination? Now, these are transformational type numbers. There's still a, a persistent uh, group of young people that we know we need to do uh, much more to assist. And I think there's something to be said for that intervention in the school environment. The big cheer should be for the, the academic attainment. That's just absolutely phenomenal. And we could see the difference where young people hadn't been mentored. So, it's certainly an approach that seems to be working. It's one we need to learn by, and uh, I'll be very keen to see what we can do to, to, to support the replication elsewhere. Okay. When can young people expect to see mentoring and talent tasters in all of our schools across the country? I know I've spoken to Ian, and uh, he's, he's very keen that the concept can be taken up uh, by others as well. So I think it's all about learning, uh, good practice, and there's a uh, clear demonstration that there's good practice uh, happening here in Glasgow and uh, hopefully others can learn from that and, and take it forward as well. Personal commitment, commitment with the team is we will do it. If asked, we will do it. It's quite straightforward. Organically, we will be in those local authority areas that are on the map. That's the current discussions that are ongoing. And we'll do it young person by young person, school by school, relationship by relationship. With the support of, of Jamie and John and others, then we will look to accelerate that. But at the moment, it is just Let's try and reach every single young person step by step. It will be very happy to, to be part of that equation and uh, work with MCR, uh, our developing uh, the young workforce regional groups and uh, local government to try and uh, spread this good practice and make sure that more young people, uh, ideally every young person in the country, eventually can get this, this approach.
But the great thing for me is actually the mechanics of this. You know, and I think that commitment to match fund. So basically all areas of the country that are currently in attainment challenge areas, the government's committed to match fund that. So if local authorities put their cash into it, they will match that. So that's an actual commitment numerically that means that we can go at the pace that's required organically to make sure we do it young person by young person, but actually this is going to happen. So in my head, this is happening. It's as simple as that. It's just a matter of when, not if. I could genuinely be here for hours and days, as you know, talking about you know, the thanks that, are, that should be given to every individual. Main event today is these guys, because all we've done is given them support. All we've done is given them the time. If we give them the time, they will fly. Care experienced young people find themselves in situations where early on in their, in their life, people don't ask them what they think. People don't listen to them. I think that the most important thing is that adults speak to young people about their hopes and their fears and their aspirations for the future. I can see it in the distance. A different way to be. It's there. I can, I can almost touch it. But something's pulling me back, my own doubts, my own fears. Some days the noise around me is too much and I struggle to see the light. Then I look out at you all and I see loads of faces wanting to hear, wanting to understand and wanting to help. I can see you all reaching out a hand to me. I'm starting to see that I'm not alone. I can begin to imagine my future. I can begin to believe in my future. I want to raise awareness for child abuse. I want to end war. I want to end poverty. I want to end animal cruelty. I want to change the way minorities are treated. I want to give hope to each and every person. I want to change the child care system so that when siblings are separated, they can still see each other. We walk together. Never above you, never below you, but always beside you. Our strength comes in standing together. Margaret Mead says, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Together, we can build a better future. For me, for you and for all of us. Take action with us. We need that helping hand and we will fly. Yeah.